Day grade 11s, welcome to this last lesson of week 23 where we're still looking at electric fields and specifically at the moment we're looking at electromagnetism. Now, we've spoken about the magnetic field around a straight a current, current current conductor. We have bent it into a single coil and looked at the magnetic field around a single coil which is carrying a, con a current and now we're going to be looking at a solenoid. There is one more shape of conductor that we need to investigate before we are done. That is a solenoid. A solenoid consists of a large number of insulated turnings that form a cylindrical coil. Normally it is made from copper wire as you can see here and it is turned around a cardboard cylinder. We can do the same experiment with the solenoid as we did with the coiled conductor. The results with the iron filings will look like this. The magnetic field forms circular loops close to the conductor where it goes into the page and where it comes out again. On the inside of the solenoid, there are straight lines similar to that of a bar magnet again. Now let's find out a bit more about solenoids. Now I want to show you how to represent the magnetic field around a solenoid in relation to the current passing through it on a diagram. You will need to show the direction of the current, the direction of the magnetic field and label the North and South Pole. To begin, let's recall the diagram we drew for a single coil. In the diagram for the single loop, I had two circles representing where the current passed up and down. Now when I cut a solenoid in half and look down on it, I will see the ends of the conductor formed into two rows. On the diagram, I represent the cut ends of the conductor as circles. The circles in the row on the left all have the current flowing out and so have a dot in the center, while the circles in the row on the right all have a cross to represent the current moving in on this side of the coil. To help you complete the diagram for a solenoid with more than one loop, I want you to look carefully at what happens when you apply the right hand rule to two conductors in the same row. Here the current is in the same direction, upwards, and you will see the magnetic field lines are in the same direction, anti-clockwise, around the conductors. Now if you look at two conductors in the other row where the current passes downwards, you will again see that the magnetic field lines are in the same direction, clockwise here. However, notice that in both rows between the conductors, the magnetic field lines oppose each other and cancel out. Can you now draw a completed diagram of a solenoid? Overall, the field line pattern is the same as for a single loop. The magnetic field lines point in the same direction inside the coil and in the opposite direction outside the coil. We can label the end of the solenoid where the field lines leave the coil as the North Pole and the other end as the South Pole. This completes our diagram of the magnetic field around the solenoid. Now I hope you can see that it is not difficult to determine the North Pole of a solenoid by applying the right hand rule. However, there is an alternative way which you may find useful. This is called the right hand solenoid rule. Because there are many coils in a solenoid, the current direction is indicated by the curl of the four fingers and the thumb points to the North Pole. Let's apply the right hand solenoid rule to this solenoid. Notice that the direction of the current is from the positive terminal and comes up on this side of the coil and down on the other in an anti-clockwise direction. If I curl my fingers 
over the coil, you can see that my thumb points to the left. The direction of the magnetic field inside the coil is shown as coming out of the coil by dots placed on the field lines. Now if the direction of the current was changed to move in a clockwise direction around the coil, can you use the right hand solenoid rule to show the direction of the magnetic field? Well, since the current is clockwise here the direction of the magnetic field is into the coil here. We show this direction with crosses on the field lines. Okay so now we need to talk about actual uses in everyday life. Now in everyday life we use solenoids and single coils as electromagnets. Remember I told you in the last lesson that the reason we call these electromagnets is because they act as magnets when we have electricity flowing through it. So let's have a look at this little video. So what you will notice is this is the electromagnet okay and what is happening is at this point it is off the current is off then they switch it on watch and when they switch it on it becomes a magnet and it picks up the iron or magnetic material on the side of the track okay and then when they want to drop it they switch the current off and it is no longer a magnet and that is what is precious and very important about electromagnets is they can be turned on and they can be turned off again. Okay, so at this point they've turned it on and they're letting the, they're getting as much as possible and then they move it across and all that guy does is switch the current off and it drops the material into the back. So that is a typical use of an electromagnet. There are lots of other uses um, and when we get into electromagnetism a bit more next year we will talk some more about that. Okay, then we've got power lines. Now, power lines are a problem for lots of things. Okay, power lines are very good for us because they, they, they provide us with electricity but obviously these power lines are carrying huge amounts of current Okay, compared to everyday life. And because they are carrying this current, okay, they have magnetic fields around them. Now, a couple of things that are problems with power lines. The first problem with the power line is that they actually get in the way of birds. And birds not only knock into the power lines, but I don't know if you know this, but birds use the magnetic field of the earth to guide them so that birds can migrate using the magnetic field. And as they go past these high powered electric, high powered electric lines, the magnetic field around them actually interferes with their senses of the magnetic field of the earth. And they end up either crashing into the lines and dying or yeah, getting electrocuted. Power lines can, or power line noise can interfere with radio communications. When we talk about noise, we don't mean noise that we can hear. We mean that they give off um, a, a res background electromagnetic field noise, and this can interfere with radio communications. When I say radio communications, I just don't mean radios. I'm talking about anything that uses signals. So you're talking about cell phones, TVs, um, your radios, everything like that. On the other hand, there is no clear link between exposure of electric and magnetic fields and humans. A lot of people believe that if you put up one of these big towers near a residence, it can cause cancer and other bad diseases, but they have done some research and at this point in time there is no clear link between the exposure to, the, of the, to electric and magnetic fields and humans. And that grade 11s is the end of this series of lessons for week 23. Have a great day.